My name's Francesca. It's really touching. I was addicted to drugs. Her bitter end was being locked up in prison. Prison was one of the best things that happened to me. How did you get caught? I remember it was after work and I was with my partner at the time and I had to go to Ashford to meet my guy and pick up a load of drugs. And he passed the hold all through the passenger side and he started, he leant through and put it on the back seat. And I just had this weird feeling and I pulled out the pub and this car come out behind me. Then the next thing you know, I was like, T is that T-bone, do they call it? They one in front, one beside me, one behind me, just like took me out, smashed all the windows through, dragged us out the car. I said, the drugs are on the back seat, they're mine. What was your sentence? The original charges was conspiracy to supply class A drugs, then drug dealing and basically drug money. I got 11 years, I served three years, eight months. <laughs> Feel accountable for your actions. I deserved my sentence, 101%. Um, you know, I, I don't. I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I was just feeding my addiction or making money. I know that you, um, what you want to make today is for your mum, but what are we making? A tray. <laughs> A tray. Yeah. When I was inside, they found out she was terminally with cancer. So she's basically bed bound. Mm. She's not allowed to get out of bed. So I just thought it was something meaningful to have a tray, to have something sturdy to put on her lap. I just thought it was something just that she's gonna really, really appreciate it. She'll be so grateful. Let's get it happening. Let's go. Do you feel in your life there's been a turning point? I'd been in prison a few weeks and I had my first visit from my dad and I've never seen my dad cry in his whole life. And he just looked at me and he said, you know how much drugs ruined your life. He was like, why would you sell them? Like, why would you do that? And he was so, he didn't make me feel emotional when I was saying it, but he was so disappointed in me. And my dad's my best friend. And I just remember walking back to my cell and I was like, that's it. Like, this is it. I know I'm serving a long time. I'm done. I'm done and whatever I can do, I'm gonna try and make my dad proud when I get out. I think it's the first time that I've really, I speak about it to people, but I feel like I just went in depth. It just keeps me wanting to prove my dad <laughs> every day that I've, I've changed. Your childhood sounds quite idyllic. My childhood was amazing. Um, you know, my dad and my mum loved me unconditionally, huge family, I went to church. I think it started from about 10 years old. I knew I was gay. Um, I knew I like, fancied women, and back then it wasn't the normal thing. It wasn't, and that really messed my brain up, like, because I couldn't understand it. Then uh, about 11, 12, I knew that like, my parents were going to split. So I don't really know subconsciously if that was the start of it. I just took loads of drugs. My dad used to work 12 hours a day. Mum was always up in her room. So I'd be off my nut. I'd be high, and they just didn't, I didn't have a clue. When my dad left, that was when it escalated onto the really hard drugs. I tried to take my own life, basically, because I couldn't handle it anymore. Um, I took an overdose and I went to hospital, had my stomach pumped and stuff. I remember just like crying, just don't want this world anymore. Like I literally just don't want it. Generally, what was prison life like itself? I had really, really good things and really, really bad things. Um, the mental health and self-harm in prison is horrific. I've seen cuts put up all up people's arms, all up people's legs. I've never seen so much self-harm, people screaming all night, kicking their doors. But then, you know, then there's, there's good times. You become a little family. It's like, wow, this is without drink. This is without drugs. This is what it feels like to be clean. Wow. Yeah. So what is it you've got there to show us? When anyone leaves prison, um, we all, like they'll get we'll get a book, and then like every prisoner will write in the book. One of my best friends in there, she actually made me this book. Uh, there's loads of loads of stuff in it. So that's my uh, one of my best friends, Ron. That was taken when we was working in the staff mess outside, and then that's my other best friend, Nat that we was really good friends with as well in prison. And then there's this bit here, so in one word, how would you describe Fran? I got nut job, crazy, special one, uh, brave, loyal, naughty, friend, adorable. 
So it's just all cute little things like that. Talking about good times in prison, though, one of the good times was uh, your relationship therapy that you went through. Yeah. That helped God. you with your mum. We do some really, really in-depth um, therapy. I spoke a lot about my mum and I explained everything and the, and the breakup and how I blamed her. And one day I was challenged by my counsellor in front of the whole group. And it was like, I challenge you to have it out with your mum on a visit. And I spoke to my mum on a visit and I said, as a kid, I blamed you for breaking the family up. The next day I called home and I ran her. And I think it was the first time she ever said it to me. She was like, I'm proud of you. Like now, she's just like my bestie, you know? Fan, you're obviously very uh, strong-minded, got a strong will. You've turned your life around now, and the proof is in the pudding. I never realised how much my whole life I was quite selfish and I would justify um, everything was everyone else's fault but mine. Just take accountability, own it. At this stage in your life, where are you now? What are you up to? When I was in prison, I always heard girls say, there's nothing that prepares you for prison. When you Google prison, like what to expect, what do I need to do? There's nothing. My brother was like, set up YouTube. He's like, do YouTube, do YouTube. So I did, um, just basically it started off that I just wanted to prepare women for prison. And they, it was about like campaigning about women having shorter sentences. It's not right. You know, you do a couple of months inside, they lose their kids and their homes for such a short sentence. Mm. They could deal with it in other ways. With all the hard work you've just done, let's see the finished product, eh? And your tree in its resting place. It's absolutely amazing, guys. Thank you so much. It means more than you know. Fran's story today was, it was emotional for me. It touched me in a way I didn't think it would. I hope this makes your day. For people to come by and tell their story like Fran did today, it's, it's really touching, it's really touching. It takes a lot. It's almost like a stone rolling down a hill. You, you can't stop that momentum until you get to the bottom. You have to roll it out and see it through to the bitter end. And her bitter end was being locked up in uh, prison. That's where her real life story now begins. It's been amazing today. I've had a really wonderful day. And yeah, this is going to absolutely blow her mind. I can't wait to get back and show her. Lovely. You like that? Good feeling. Thank you very much. <laughs>